Why were prophets sent? The prophets were sent to guide the bondsmen. As Allah says clearly in this verse 64 and 65, why the prophets were sent to be obeyed, to be accepted. You know, Allah says in Quran, Hadayna hunna jadain. Allah says that we've shown, we've showed and we've guided the people both towards both the paths. Which are the both paths? The path which is a slope, which is rolling down towards the hellfire. It seems very easy to roll downwards and it seems very easy to move downhill, but, but the end is the hellfire. And then Allah has shown us the steep climb, the steep uphill climb to the Jannah. It climbing up hill and especially climbing the steep mountains is definitely difficult. It is exhausting. It is tiring. But the reward is Jannah. So Allah says, We've guided them to both the paths. And how has Allah guided his bondsmen towards the path is that he from amongst the bondsmen chose people to be the prophets and messengers, sent down to revelations, gave them the holy books and the scriptures to guide them, and through them the bondsmen. And then Allah made these prophets and these messengers as the human models, the human models, the models of excellence for all the guidance which was sent. The prophets were actually the human models of all the guidance sent to them by the revolutions of Allah. For example, if I would make you understand the whole thing very easily, that why we need to follow and how merciful Allah was sending us these prophets and messengers. See if like you were to go to a place, an unknown place where you've never been and you don't even know the way to get to that place. What do you normally do? We get to a person who knows the place and say if we come across a person, the first person he just tells us orally or verbally and guides us that you go on that road and you take the second or the third left turn and then you take the third left turn and then you see the uh, a signboard and you see a building and he just gives us the signs and he gives us the turnings and he names us the roads and he just verbally explains the whole path. And then there's another person who verbally or orally does explain the whole whole route but actually draws up and makes a road map and sketches and then hands it over to us that you keep on following this it'll be easy for you to get to your point and then there's a third person he first tries to explain it verbally by by his word of mouth and then when he thinks that we are just really empty-minded if we're not catching then he draws a road map and a sketch hands it over to us and then when he still sees us empty-faced or lost, then he, he tells us, okay, fine, I'll guide you. you. You come behind me, I'll ride in front of you, I come in my car, you follow my car, and I'll get you there. Now, who would you relate to? Just tell me, would you relate to the first person? No, not to the second person. Oh, yes, no, never. But obviously, you would relate to the third person because he's explained, he has given you the map, and he is actually acting as a guide to get you to your to your desired destination. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done. He sent us the revelations. Then he gave us the books, which were the road maps and the guides to Jannah. And then he has said that having this road map, even despite having this road map to Jannah, if you cannot understand, if you cannot comprehend, if you are doubtful in a certain situations, and if you are confused and if you are not clear, then these are the human models of this road map. And these are the models of the prophets. And these are the models of the messengers. And these are the human models of the revelations of the Quran. <laughs> 